On behalf of the Patient Safety Authority, I'd like to welcome you to this webinar titled, The Risks of Invasive Group A Streptococcus in Long-Term Care. My name is Terry Lee Roberts, and I'll be your moderator for this program. Now I'd like to introduce our speaker for the webinar. Joanne Adkins is a registered nurse and senior infection preventionist for the Patient Safety Authority. In her role at the PSA, she works with Pennsylvania healthcare facilities to improve patient safety through infection prevention initiatives. Joanne has also presented educational programs on infection prevention topics at the local, state, and national levels. Joanne is board certified in infection control and epidemiology and is a fellow of the Association for Professionals in Infection Control and Epidemiology. Ms. Adkins is a 2019 recipient of APIC's Heroes of Infection Prevention Award for Education. She is a member of the Association for Professionals in Infection Control and Prevention, the Sigma Theta Tau International Nursing Honor Society, the Pennsylvania Association Directors of Nursing Administration Long-Term Care, and the Central Pennsylvania Association for Healthcare Quality. Joanne, I will now turn the program over to you. Thank you, Terry Lee. Hi, everybody. Today we're going to discuss invasive group A streptococcus and the incidence of it in Pennsylvania long-term care facilities. Our objectives for today are to discuss the manifestations of group A strep in the elderly, identify best practices to prevent the spread of group A strep infection in a long-term care facility, and recognize the importance of early recognition of group A strep infection for resident and healthcare worker safety and well-being. So group A streptococcus or strep, strep pyrogenes is a gram-positive organism, but they are very clinically important for humans. They cause many different infections, and these infections can range from minor illnesses to very serious or deadly diseases. Group A strep is infrequently part of your normal flora, but when it is, it is usually pathogenic. So when we talk non-invasive group A streptococcus infection, these are usually ranging from mild superficial skin infections or infections of the throat. This will be your strep throat, your pharyngitis, maybe scarlet fever, or maybe skin infections, including impetigo and cellulitis. It can also, with the cellulitis, become a more invasive infection characterized by spread into the deep layers of the skin. But today we're going to focus on invasive group A streptococcus infection. The invasion of, of strep pyrogenes or group A strep into the fascia can cause necrotizing fasciitis, which is what the picture on the slide is. That was a picture that started out as a diabetic ulcer and um, spread into severe cellulitis and then necrotizing fasciitis. This may continue to spread until it becomes a life-threatening condition that requires surgery. And one of the problems with group A strep is it can also, certain strains release toxins that lead to even more severe tissue damage. But when we're talking the invasive infections, we're talking the necrotizing fasciitis, acute rheumatic fever, post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, pneumonia, or bacteremia. When we talk rheumatic fever and glomerulonephritis, these are actually post-infection. These are not associated with the initial acute infection. These are complications that follow a small percentage of infections and occur several weeks after that initial strep infection. Rheumatic fever is characterized by inflammation of the joints and or the heart following a strep throat and acute glomerulonephritis is inflammation of your kidney and follows either a strep throat or cellulitis and a skin infection. But when we talk about group A strep in the elderly, 
it becomes much more severe. Invasive group A streptococcus causes severe life-threatening illness among the elderly and particularly long-term care residents. It is higher among long-term care residents because of the significant morbidity and mortality and the risk due to advanced age, close living conditions, and the comorbidities that many of your residents carry, such as diabetes or cardiovascular disease. Because of the mortality rate that ranges anywhere from 8% to 40% in long-term care facilities during outbreaks, a single case requires action. In Pennsylvania, we have two reporting systems. If it is an infection that occurs within your facility, it is reported into PACERS, the Pennsylvania Patient Safety Reporting System. And anytime we have a positive culture of step strep pyrogenes or group A strep, that also must be reported by facilities or practitioners into the Pennsylvania National Electronic Disease Surveillance System, or NEDS. And that happens within five days of identification. Many times the lab will be reporting that, or hospitals may be reporting it. But group A strep is reported always into PA NEDS, and if it's an infection that occurs within your facility, then would also be reported into PACERS. When we queried the databases to look for incidents within long-term care facilities. In PA PACERS, we looked at January 1st of 2013 through December 31st of 2016. In that three-year time period, based on culture results, there were 18 cases identified. In the Pennsylvania NET system, they looked at all the cases for the same time period, but then to identify it as long-term care associated, the Department of Health staff asked themselves, was the patient a resident of a nursing home or other chronic care facility, or were they recently transferred from such a facility to identify all of the cases that would have been associated with long-term care? And they identified 63 cases. Because both databases showed an increase in time over, an increase in events over time, it is a, pay, a safety concern for the long-term care facilities when you remember that even one case requires action. So here's just a graph that shows the increase over those years' time. In the blue is what all the cultures that were positive for group A strep associated with long-term care residents that were reported into PA NEDS, and in the red were all of the cases reporting it reported into PACERS that were positive for group A streptococcus. And there was definitely an increase seen in both databases. So what is a long-term care facility supposed to do to prevent transmission? While transmission is usually through droplet or contact with an infected person, you can also have transmission off of surfaces, but fomite transmission is rare. A lot of times the transmission occurs from asymptomatic healthcare workers. Your long-term care healthcare workers can have active skin infections that may be caused by group A strep. They could have a sore throat or a strep throat or they could be an asymptomatic carrier. And studies have shown that these are ways that it is transmitted to the residents. So what are your prevention strategies when you have that one culture that confirmed an invasive group A strep infection? Well, the first thing you think of is infection control. And the major part of that is staff education. Make sure your staff know what to do and, and monitor to make sure they are doing it every time. You also need to do monitoring of residents, employees, and contracted staff for signs or symptoms 
of group A strep infection. Surveillance would be enhanced to identify additional cases. And also you would wanna identify any potential carriers. When you have one confirmed case, this is when you wanna contact your Department of Health office for assistance. The Department of Health may actually recommend additional actions to be necessary if you then progress to a second case. So make sure you're reporting any cases to appropriate agencies. Like I said, all cases of invasive group A strep are reported into the Pennsylvania NED system. And then if you have a resident with group A strep, they need to be put on appropriate precautions. If it is a cellulitis or a skin infection or maybe some type of wound such as a diabetic ulcer that's draining. It is standard precaution if you can cover that infected area with a dressing that will contain the drainage. However, if you can't put a dressing on it or it does not adequately contain the drainage, then that resident is in standard contact and droplet precautions. And the reason why droplet precautions is added there is a lot of times it is carried in the throat. If someone has a strep throat or pneumonia that is positive for group A strep, they're put in droplet and standard precautions. And if it is invasive disease, such as a positive bloodstream infection, then they are put in droplet and standard precautions also because we want to make sure we're preventing any transmission from colonization of the throat. Staff education. Staff education is vital. Make sure your staff are educated, and this is a good time to do a reminder on the importance of hand hygiene and respiratory etiquette, and then monitor to make sure they're doing it. Make sure they are performing hand hygiene when they should, and make sure they're following cough and sneeze etiquette, that they're not coughing or sneezing into their hand without cleaning their hand. That's when you wanna make sure they're coughing or sneezing into the bend of their elbow or into a tissue that they're throwing away immediately and cleaning their hands. Make sure staff know the importance of following your precautions and know how to do standard droplet and contact precautions. This is a good time to reinforce and re-educate staff on the proper use of personal protective equipment. One thing to ask yourself as the infection preventionist, and many of you are also the clinical nurse educator, is how often you actually watch your staff or have them do a return demonstration of how to put on and remove Don or Dolph PPE appropriately. I know when Terry Lee and I visit facilities and do rounds, we many times see people who are not wearing the equipment appropriately. When you have this equipment on, make sure your staff knows that the mask must cover their nose and their mouth. It can't rest underneath their nose. The gown should be tied because we wanna prevent soilage of, of our uniform. Make sure they're educated on how to appropriately do wound and dressing changes. And part of that includes how to dispose appropriately of the soil dressing. Make sure your housekeeping staff receives some education on appropriate cleaning with a focus on those high touch areas. And then one of the things that many times gets missed is equipment cleaning between residents. If you have shared equipment, make sure you are educating on the importance of cleaning it between residents. And if you have somebody with invasive group A strep, please use dedicated equipment if at all possible. And then, like I said, you need to monitor compliance. After you've done all this re-education, then monitor compliance with hand hygiene with respiratory etiquette, with your precautions and PPE usage and your cleaning practices. And while you're monitoring, you may have to do some on the spot education if somebody is not following the protocols appropriately. 
That was the education for staff, but then we also have to look for additional cases. So as the infection preventionist, after you have that one case of invasive group A strep, then you want to do a retrospective review of all your resident cultures for the previous month to make sure that you didn't miss one of those cases. You'll also be doing active symptom surveillance to look for both invasive and non-invasive cases. And that's done and recommended to be done for four months. This is when you educate your nursing staff to help check residents daily for symptoms of group A strep and culture them as symptomatic. Are we seeing new skin infections? Are, are residents complaining of a sore throat that needs to be cultured to see if it is group A strep? You also need to survey your staff, educate them on the symptoms of group A strep, and then culture them as symptomatic. And anytime you have staff with positive cultures, they need to be referred for treatment. Staff education on recognizing group A strep infections, the importance of ba basic hygiene and not working while ill will help identify additional cases. A lot of your staff may have younger children. As I always say, children are Petri dishes and carry many, many types of organisms that cause infection. And one of the organisms that up to 20% of children are colonized with in their throats is group A strep. So if you have an outbreak of group A strep, you want to think also, could these healthcare workers potentially be carriers because their children are having, are having strep throats? And like I said, one, even one case needs to be reported. So the Department of Health may also request culturing of people that are in close contact with your residents who have group A strep infections to see if they are also carriers of group A strep. And the reason why we brought this topic up is we've had that actual increase, but I worked with facilities that were having actual outbreaks. And this is a case study from one of the facilities that had an outbreak. It was a 200 bed long-term care facility and they had an outbreak of invasive group A strep infections. And remember I said in the beginning that one infection requires action when you have that second infection that's then considered an outbreak. In a four month, in a two month time frame, this facility had four infections that were positive for group A strep. One was a wound infection and all four also had positive blood cultures and the Department of Health was notified. And then they also contacted us to work with the facility. Culturing was performed of all staff and all 200 residents within that facility. Six residents and five staff tested positive for group A strep. And how, what they cultured were throats and any active skin infections. All 11 people were treated with antibiotics and then recultured to, for a test of cure to make sure they were negative and we had treated them. Staff education was also provided at this time and they also enhanced their surveillance looking for infections and also did enhanced monitoring of hand hygiene and PPE usage, thinking that that would then stop the outbreak. Two additional cases two months later were positive for group A strep, and they were identified following the screening and treatment of positive carriers. So obviously we did not reach the root of the problem. So at that point in time, um, we went in from the authority to work with the staff and we looked at all the cases. We pulled up all the six positive cases looking for that red flag or that commonality. And after reviewing them, the common denominator we found was blood draws. All of these people who developed um, bacteremia positive for group A strep had had blood draws within 48 hours of developing symptoms of sepsis. Now this facility contracted all its laboratory functions to an outside agency. So we then focused our review on the laboratory they were contracted with. 
while I was there, we identified that the, it came down to all these patients had their blood drawn by the same phlebotomist. And when they went back through the records, this phlebotomist was not screened when all of the staff and residents were initially screened. This phlebotomist refused. We then watched this person do their blood draws and on observation revealed several infection prevention breaches. One of the things that was observed is this person had a small basket that carried all their supplies to do the, the blood draws that they would take from room to room sitting on the resident's bed. They were not sitting on an overbed table with a barrier down such as a paper towel. There were some instances where gloves were worn but hand hygiene was not performed. So there were a lot of breaches in infection prevention. So to address this, the mitigation we did is the agency that they were contracted with to do the blood draws was contacted. And they worked with that agency on screening. They also worked with that agency on educating their staff on group A stress. And I will tell you, when this person was finally screened, they were indeed positive for group A strep in their throat. They also verified infection prevention training since there were such obvious breaches in infection prevention. So what, what that was learned from this is within your facility, you don't know what you don't know. You need to make sure that your contracted staff, whether they're laboratory staff, they may be therapists that are contracted, respiratory therapists that are contracted. You may be a bigger facility where housekeeping is contracted. You need to know how they are educated in infection prevention and control. And are they educated on the policies and procedures of your facility? They need to have adequate training in infection prevention to work within your facility, and you need to contact that contracted agency and ask to see what training these people go through. Because this person obviously was not trained appropriately in infection prevention that they were taking the same basket from room to room sitting it on the bed. They also need to be educated in your facility policies and procedures. Ask if their policies and procedures align with yours, because anyone that is working within your facility, whether your staff or contracted staff, need to be following the policies and procedures of your facility. And then you also have to observe and monitor these contracted staff to make sure they are following the policies and procedures which was not happening in the instance of this facility, which led to six um, cases of invasive group A strep that was bacteremia, it was all in the blood, and these residents were acutely ill and all required transfer to acute care. So you need to be aware, not only looking for group A strep, but anytime you have contracted staff, you need to be aware of their infection prevention training, the policies and procedures they have been educated on and do they align with yours? And if not, then that contracted facility need to educate the staff coming to you on your policies and procedures. And then when you do your monitoring, it's not just your employees, but also monitor these contracted individuals to make sure they are following appropriately. So in conclusion, because of the potential severity of a group A strep infection in long-term care, remember you have very debilitated residents with a lot of comorbidities, even one case is an emergency and should be investigated by the facility and the Department of Health. Be aware of the infection prevention training and practices of contracted staff. And know that your contracted staff agency personnel follow the policies and procedures of your facility because they must be following what was set forth as standard of care within your facility. 
what questions do you have? And if we run out of time, I have listed my email here that you can actually email me if you think of something later. So Terry Lee, I'm gonna turn this back over to you. Thanks, Joanne. As Joanne said, this concludes the slide presentation portion of our program. Now we'd like to begin our question and answer period. If you have questions, please type them in the Q&A box found at the bottom of your screen. Please hover at the bottom of your screen, you'll see three dots. Click the dots to open the uh, Q&A panel and direct your questions to all panelists. And we will try to answer as many questions as we can. Okay, Joanne, I'm seeing one question here. You spoke about the importance of cleaning practices. Should we use something special to clean our equipment or the environmental surfaces? No, your approved healthcare disinfectant will kill group A streptococcus. What is more important is making sure that it is being cleaned appropriately. Is your equipment being cleaned in between residents? Are the high touch areas being cleaned appropriately by your housekeeping services? And if it is shared, if it is possible to dedicate the equipment, but you do not need to use any special agent different than what you already currently use for your equipment. Thank you. Joanne, I do have another question. Who reported okay. the data in who reported the data into the NED system and why was there such a discrepancy with PA Pacers data entry? Okay, you have to remember they are two separate systems and they are not looking at exactly the same thing. When it comes to reporting into the NED system, that is done by providers or facilities for a positive culture. Anytime you have a positive culture of group A strep, that gets reported into PA NEDS, whether it is a person that is in the community, a patient within a hospital, or a resident within long-term care. And many times I know that will be reported by the laboratory, but not always. But there is a definite difference between them. When it comes to PA pacers, the, we only report what you report from your facility are infections that occur within your facility. So you will not see all of those other, you may have someone come into you with group A strep, but it was not an infection that occurred within your facility, so you would not be putting it into PACERS as such. Thank you, and as a follow-up to that question, will the lab determine if the group A strep is invasive? Invasive group A strep is when it occurs within sterile sites. Um, Non-invasive strep are the local, the skin infections you see or your strep throat. But invasive group A strep is when it occurs within a sterile site, such as a bloodstream infection, pneumonia, um, when you may end up with a deep wound infection in cellulitis where they get the necrotizing fasciitis into the muscle of their skin, below their skin. The lab does not determine that. It is determined by where the infection occurs, whether it is invasive or not. Thank you. Seeing no further questions at this time, as Joanne said, her email address is listed below. If you do think of a question that you would like to ask, feel free to email Joanne. This concludes our webinar.